All right, guys. So today we're going to talk about the three core stability exercises you should do every day. Now, if you heard that one word in that phrase, it was stability. I'm not going to be talking to you guys about the three dynamic core exercises to work your abs. This is a stability video, meaning the emphasis is on limiting excessive or unwanted motion at our spine so that we can have awesome carryover to the exercises that we're looking to perform in in the gym, like your squat, your deadlift, your bench, your clean and snatch. If you do these exercises, I promise you, you will feel much more powerful in each one of those movements. So let's talk about what the exercise grouping is called, the McGill Big Three. Now these are based off of the research from renowned back expert, Dr. Stuart McGill. Now Dr. McGill has spent his entire life working on how to stabilize the spine and understand how the way in which we use our spine leads to certain types of injuries. Now, whenever we're trying to keep our spine resilient to injury, under load, we want to brace it, lock it into place, and then move about our hips. So the different exercises that we do today, starting off with the curl up, are gonna emphasize that. Now, when a lot of people work the front of their core, what do they do? They do crunches. They move their spine. Look at my spine right now. It is flexing up and back down. Now, while that's not a bad exercise at working the front of your core through movement to strengthen your rectus abdominis or six pack muscles, I want to emphasize stability. I want to limit any motion at my spine. So what am I gonna do? Drop one foot. Now, if you're not in pain, doesn't matter which one. You're gonna have your hands underneath your low back. Now, these hands are pressure sensors. They're going to pick up if you round your back. So keep your hands here to feel for whether or not that happens. What you're gonna do is brace your core. You're gonna turn all those muscles on, and then you're gonna pick your head up just slightly off the floor and hold for 10 seconds. The hold is the most important part of this. We're not just moving our spine. We're trying to emphasize stability by getting those muscles to kick on and lock the spine in place. So this is what it's gonna look like. Brace, pick the head up slightly, hold for 10 seconds. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and then back down. Now, if you're feeling your neck is a little turned on and maybe just a little bit stiff while you're doing this, all you're gonna do is tuck your chin first. So just tuck your chin a little bit and then pick up. And that may help a lot as far as taking some tension off the front of your neck. But again, this is a slight pickup of the head. What I don't wanna see is this. Don't pick your head up this high. All you have to do is pick it up slightly. And by holding it here and keeping your core braced, all these muscles on the front side of your spine, like your rectus abdominis, your transverse abdominis, all those muscles are turning on really, really hard to basically stiffen the spine. Now, back down, something like this, do six reps in a row, and I promise you, you'll feel those muscles working. Now, what does that exercise do? Like I said, it's working the front of our spine. There is no one size fits all when it comes to hitting all the parts of your spine, because there's a lot of muscles that surround, that make up the core. So we need a different barrage of exercises to really hit all parts. Now the next one let's do, how do we hit the side? Side plank. Now, you're gonna get down on your side, from your elbows. Now the modified version is usually one of the most easy go-to exercises. You're just gonna pick up and hold in this position. Now this is a great exercise for hitting that downside part of your core and your lateral hip, your glute medius. So if you have a very weak or poorly coordinated glute medius, lateral hip muscles, you'll feel this work in there too. Again, 10 seconds and then back down. Something like this, six reps on each side. Now if this is really easy, how do you modify it? Let's go to a full plank. From here, we can put our hands here. It's a step one. If that's too easy, put your hands here. Again, we're holding for 10 seconds. We're turning on those muscles of the spine. We're limiting excessive unwanted motion. I want that spine here and I don't want to twist. We're limiting excessive or unwanted motion of the spine and stabilizing and locking it in place. So again, six reps each side, 10 seconds. Now we're going to go to the last part. We've hit the front. We've hit the sides. Let's hit the back. Now, when most people think, how do I work the back? What do they do? They're trying to work back extensions, supermans, things like that. You're again, you're moving your spine into an over arch, into extension. What do we wanna do? We wanna limit excessive or unwanted motion of the spine, lock it in place in a neutral position and stabilize around that. The bird dog is a great exercise for that. 
very low load on the spine, but working those muscles, the erectors of your spine very well. This is what you're gonna do. Get on all fours. Now again, find that neutral position. So you're not rounded, you're not overarched. Find that middle position from right here. You're gonna brace your core and you're gonna go opposites. So we're gonna go right hand extension, left leg kick out. We're gonna go out and we're gonna hold it for 10 full seconds. Now, after that 10 seconds, keep the spine braced. This is the part where a lot of people mess up on, is we're gonna slowly come back, not move your spine, touch, back out. Hold for another 10 seconds. We're sweeping under our body. If you think about this, what's happening at my hips? Flexion and then back. This is like a squat as far as the motion that's occurring. Back flat, no motion at the, or motion at the hips. I don't want this because what just happened? I lost my neutral spine in my back. So as you go out, you're holding, you're keeping that core braced, hold for 10 seconds, sweep back under the body, touch, and then back out. Now, common mistakes that I see with this exercise. First, kick the leg way too wide. Now watch my back while this happens. I'll just do the leg movement, but people do this. What happened to my back? It overarched, it extended. I want that foot only a couple inches off the ground. Watch the difference. Overarch, I'm gonna keep it just a couple inches off the ground. You see the difference? So we're able to keep that core in a little bit better position because we're keeping our hips moving as they should because the hips directly affect the spine. Next thing, I want you to think about really making a fist as hard as you can with your arm. And when you do that, you're gonna light up some of those muscles of your upper back as well. If you do the bird dog correctly and create as much tension from fist to foot, this is gonna be tough. You should be sweating by the time you're done with this. So watch how I do that with a lot of emphasis also in my fist making a lot of tension. So we're here, brace, fist, out. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Under, tap, back out. And again, 10 seconds. Now, if that is too tough for you and you're wobbling all over, how do you regress? You can do that with only the hips. So just be here and just extend the leg. Hold that for 10 seconds and back. Or if that's even too tough, you can do it where you're just moving your arms. But again, the end goal is just going all the way out and holding. A way that you can again progress that, if you wanna add in just a little bit more dynamic movement of your arms is going out and you can draw some squares. Again, emphasizing core stability while extremities are moving. That is the end carryover that we're looking for in our core stability work because it's applicable to the way in which you move in the gym. Stable core, movement of extremities. I have been doing personally the McGill Big Three before every single workout for the past year, and I've seen crazy carryover into how well and how powerful I'm moving during my workout. On my off days, I still do this. I do a set of six for 10 seconds of each exercise if I don't have a lot of time. If I have time, I do a descending rep scheme pyramid. Six reps, four reps, two reps. If you wanna do more, eight, six, four, two. But again, the hold is the most important. You must do a 10 second hold to emphasize that stability, to limit the excessive or unwanted motion of the spine moving. We wanna keep that spine locked in place while we move the rest of our extremities. But again, the McGill Big Three, I want you to start doing this. I promise you, you will find a huge carryover to how you feel and how you're moving in the gym. Hope you guys liked today's quick video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, like it, and in the comment section below, let me know if there's anything else you wanna learn about in next week's video. Until then, Happy squatting.